Uh, this video is another example on solving systems of equations with three unknowns. Uh, so in the previous videos that we've seen so far, uh, all of our equations had all three variables in there. Uh, but that won't always be the case. And it actually is easier to solve when you don't have all three variables in there because it makes it the solving process a little quicker because there's less, uh, less manipulations you have to make. Uh, so in this example here, uh, if we said to solve the system, we have 4x minus z equals 12. Uh, 3 fifths y plus 1 half z equals 3 and 1 third x plus 2 thirds z equals 10 and you know to solve this the first thing I would do is try to eliminate the fractions because it makes it harder to work with whenever you have an equation with fractions what you really do is you want to clear fractions to clear fractions in an equation remember what you do you multiply by the LCD so the first equation here I don't have to manipulate it all I'm going to keep it as 4x minus z equals 12 and I'll label it with equation 1 the second equation to clear the fractions, uh, I'm going to find the LCD of 5 and 2, right? So the smallest number 5 and 2 are both factors of it. The smallest number 5 and 2 both go into evenly, which is 10. And I'm going to multiply that to each term. You should be familiar with this at this point. And when I do that, think about what happens here. You do 10 times 3, which is 30, divided by 5, uh, which gives you 6. So this will be 6y. You also could say 10 divided by 5 gives you 2, and then 2 times 3y gives you 6y. Either way is the same. Plus here we got 10 times 1 half z, so 10 times 1 is 10, divided by 2 gives us 5, so this will be plus 5z. And it's equal to, make sure you're working on both sides, you multiply by the LCD, even if it's not a fraction, it gets multiplied to every term, 10 times 3, which is 30. So that's going to be equation 2. And then the last equation here, um, the LCD here, 1 third x plus 2 thirds z equals 10, well, 3 is already a common denominator for these two, so you want to multiply everything by the LCD of 3. And remember, it's every single term is multiplied by 3. So you have 3 times 1 third, the 3 divided by 3 cancels 2 of 1, so 1 times 1x is just going to be x. 3 times 2 thirds, this will be plus, the 3's cancel, you'll get 1 times 2z, so it'll just be plus 2z. And it's equal to 3 times 10, which is 30, and this will be equation 3. Now remember, when I did this just now, this is something you should already know how to do, so I did it pretty quickly. All right? So clear fractions is probably the easiest thing to do first. Now when I'm trying to solve this system, I want to solve this by elimination. What we did in the previous videos, and you could still do it here, is you want to choose a pair of equations and eliminate one of the variables, then choose another pair of equations and eliminate that same variable. Um, if I'm looking at this one, uh, I'm going to use equations, uh, let's say, well, first off, let's say what you want to eliminate. So these both have x's and z's, 1 and 3. But equation 2 doesn't uh, have any x's, right? So y and z is different than x and z, which these two have. So equation 1 and equation 3 already are a system of two unknowns, right? They both have the same two unknowns. So if I can solve for one of the variables here, then I can use that to find the rest. So I'm going to choose eliminate x's uh, using equations 1 and 3. Because in this case, this is actually a system of two of the same unknown variables. So if I choose to eliminate x as using equation 1 and equation 3, here I have 4x and in equation 3 I just have x. So well, how do I multiply equation 3 by some number to make it look like a negative 4 in front so that it will cancel the positive 4 in front of the x here? Well, I have to multiply equation 3 by negative 4. So I'm going to do negative 4 times equation 3. And we're going to add that to equation 1, because we have negative 4x then, this will be a positive 4x, so they'll cancel. So negative 4 times equation 3, it's going to be negative 4 times x, which will be negative 4x. Negative 4 times 2z, so a negative times a positive makes this a negative 8z. And it's equal to negative 4 times 30, which makes this negative 120. Equation 1 is not getting manipulated at all, it's going to stay as 4x minus z equals 12. And remember, when we eliminate, we really are adding these together. Elimination is also called the addition method. So when I eliminate here, negative 4x plus 4x, these cancel out. And they should, right? When you add these together, they should cancel to a 0. Remember, same terms of opposite signs will be 0x, so it just cancels. Negative 8z minus z will be negative 9z. And it's equal to negative 120 plus 12 um, so it's still going to be a negative number. Negative 120 plus 12 is negative 108. Now, 
The reason I did what I did is so I could just have one variable left. That's why I picked these two equations to work with because I knew that when I did this, these both had x's and z's in it, so I chose to eliminate x's, so I would just have a z left over, which I do here. You could have also eliminated z's and then had just x's left over. It's your choice. Uh, so now I have negative 9z equals negative 108. To solve this, I divide by negative 9 each side. So I end up with z equals one, negative 108 divided by negative 9. I know it should be positive, so 108 divided by 9 uh, it comes out to 12. So this is going to be equal to a positive 12. So you found z right away. You didn't even have to do two manipulations. Now once you find z, what do you do with it? Well, now I can back sub into equation 1 or 3 to find x, and equation 2 to find y. So uh, let's say we'll back sub into, I'll say equation 2 to find y. Because it's the only one that has y in it, and we have z now, so now we can evaluate what it is. So we would have 6 times y plus 5 times z, which is now 12, equals 30. So this ends up being 6y plus 5 times 12, which is 60, equals 30. We're going to subtract 60 from each side. So I have 6y equals 30 minus 60 is a negative 30. And then we divide by 6 and divide by 6. So we get y equals negative 30 divided by 6 is going to be negative. And then 30 divided by 6 is 5. So we got y equals negative 5. And now we can sub in either 1 or 3 to find x. It doesn't matter which equation you pick. Um, I'll back sub into 3. But just because x has got no coefficient other than 1, so it's easier to solve. Just slightly easier. So we'll back sub into equation 3 to find x, which makes x plus 2 times 12 equals 30, which means it's x plus 2 times 12 is 24 equals 30. And then we're going to uh, subtract 24 from each side. So end up with x equals 30 minus 24. Uh, which ends up being 6. So my ordered triple here, x, y, z, to solve the system would be 6, negative 5, 12. Again, the order doesn't matter, right? Uh, and how you found it, the order does matter in the order, tri order triple. Right? So when you find it, the order is not telling you the order to write it in here. It's the list of alphabetical order on the variables. So x, y, and z. We got 6 is x. Negative 5 is y, 12 is z. You need to have it in order in the in the ordered triple. All right, and that's the ordered triple that would make this system true um, for each of the equations. It makes all of the equations work if you use those x, y, and z values. Uh, so it's a little different than the previous ones because in this case you actually, uh, you know, you only had one variable that came out when you eliminated, but that's because the system that we created had um, a system of two uh, two of the same variables in each of the equations, right? So it's two equations with the same two unknowns. If you had tried to eliminate z, suppose you did that with 1 and 2, then you would have an equation that has x's and y's. So then you'd have to also try to eliminate z's using another pair, so you would have x's and y's in there, and then solve that. It would be a little more complicated. You'd still be able to solve it, but you'd be creating a larger equation. So it's easiest when you can just get down to one variable right away. If you have one variable right away, you can always sub that into another one that already has that variable in there. If there's only two, uh, two variables for it, and then solve the rest. Uh, so hopefully that helps. You know, it's it's actually an easier example. You know, the part of clearing fractions is just the only thing that's a little different. Otherwise, we use elimination just like you normally would. Once you solve for one of the variables, you substitute back in to try to solve for the others. Um, so hopefully that video helps out.